Welcome to the Gym Wits Podcast. I'm Ryan George. I'm Justin Guild, aka Chef Sonic. And we are at the Gym Wits. So today you're going to try to stump, I don't, know if, I don't know if stump me is the right word, but um, you said you have some exercises that you think are overrated yep. and uh, you're going to challenge me to see if, uh, if I agree. Yes. Is that how this So, um, well, basically I, I feel there's a lot of things, fitness related, maybe some nutrition, just in general, that we do or people do that are just not that great mm-hmm. and sort of wanted to discuss a few exercises and I'm sure there's various other things and some might be injury related uh, but I wanted to discuss a few exercises that I've done over the years and I've just never had great results from them either that or I see everyone doing them and I'm like really is that really where we want to spend our time so uh, I have a few exercises and I want to see what you think and also we have a a a really cool phone call Uh, a friend called in as a part of a segment, we're going to call it Gym Wits Live, where you guys can call in and ask us your fitness questions uh, via cool. Skype, and we'll do our best to answer them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. we'll get to that. All right. So, exercise numero uno okay. in the uh, most overrated. Now, remember, this is not in any order. This is just uh, my top five overrated. And, and I don't really know what you're what you're going to come up with so I might be I may think you're wrong. Yes, you may. Okay. You may. All right, we'll see. The first one is the curl. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad exercise. It's just a regular standard bicep curl. Just your yeah. standard, I uh, just any curl, any curl. I just it's just working the biceps. Now, it's not a bad exercise, but uh, when you put it in the list of all the other exercises, it's so far down on the totem pole. Mm-hmm. And so once again, not a bad exercise. It's just for how much people do the curl, I think it's uh, overrated. Once again, not bad, just very overrated. Mm-hmm. I think people spend so much time doing curls. Uh, you could just do, I think you don't need to do that many of them. You could just do a few of them and do your more important exercises. What do you think? So context is kind of key uh, of to course. everything. So of course, depends on your purpose for doing curl as a, as a quote functional exercise. So basically, as, as an exercise that that is going to help with your everyday activities or sports, it's not the most effective thing. It's not very super effective unless you have particularly weak biceps. It's an isolation exercise, which means it works one mostly one muscle. I mean, really, it works on a few different muscles, but it primarily works on the biceps. Um, and it's in one range of motion, in one plane, so it's very simple movement that doesn't have any real life applications. Like how often are you just doing that movement? So yes. as, as an exercise that applies to everyday life and sports and activities, yeah, it's not the most effective. Now, cosmetically though, or aesthetically, it is one of the most important ones. If your goal is just, you know, to look they're good, big, big right? Biceps. Like, like mo- when we when we talk about like what are the muscles that people look at, especially for men, like what's one of the most important muscles is the biceps. Like that just is. So if you're just going from the standpoint of I want to look, you know, I, I want to look, you know, what is con- society considers like the ideal, then yeah, if you want you want big arms, you're gonna have to do some bicep curls. Well, well, uh, he, I mean, no. To, to be so fair, many other I mean, exercises so, that work no, the bicep. No, yeah, but no, but not that isolate. So we're, no, when yes, we're talking that about isolate. When we're talking about aesthetics. We're talking about bodybuilding type of movements. Then isolation becomes key because yes, then you can of course. central. You know, you can focus in on one exercise. So now, one thing I will say though is while people do even in bodybuilding. Um, in that context tend to be hyper focused on bicep curls a lot of times it's everything else around the biceps that will make the arms look better so like if you have really developed shoulders or good you know developed triceps uh, those work together with nicely developed biceps to make the arms look good so sometimes people are so focused on the biceps that they yes. don't put enough effort into developing the shoulders and the triceps so if it's an aesthetic thing you still want to work on the arms as a whole and the bicep curls tend to be overused but again it really depends on your purpose if the goal is just look good then yeah bicep curls are fine but if you're if it's a functional thing then it might be you maybe your bicep time curls may, do you really need 
I, and how many different ways? Depends like, on the person. I guess so. You know, if it's me, I'm lucky. Like my arms have always been kind of big, so I've never. I don't have to do tons of bicep curls. But like, if you if you have a hard time growing the biceps, then you're gonna have to do no. more than the average person. So it really depends yeah. on the on the person. So yeah, it's overrated or overused unless your goal is like I just want to look good. Well, then, I think that, but there's a lot of people that are just in the gym just to get in shape or just to be fit, and they're doing bicep curls. Yeah. I'm like, you're really wasting your time. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Again, it once depends, again, it's not the yeah. worst. It's just for pe- unless you're doing that one thing. There's, I think there's. Almost always something better you could be doing yeah. with your time. Fair enough. Yeah. That's the idea. All right. So my second exercise is the uh, bent over dumbbell row for the back. I have just never found it to be that effective for working. I know it works your bicep a little bit for working the lower back. I've always found that the bent over uh, row with the bar is so much better or the deadlift or many other things, but just that one motion where you're where you're, you're bent over, you have your knee on the um on the bench and you're just yeah, I'll lifting. try to we'll include um a w- images of the exercises for uh, app users. I just users. feel like you can also and tilt your body and get momentum. It's just I just never felt it to be the gr- a great exercise for you know working your lower back and it's only one side and I don't know that's just how I feel. What do you I think about disagree. that exercise? I disagree with that. Um, let's see. So bent over. I know a lot of bodybuilders love that doing really heavy bent over. Yeah. Well, so first thing I consider is I think you mentioned it working the lower back, but it works the lats. That's what the primary too, muscle yes. that it works. So, so lower back, it's minimal um, on the lower back, especially if you're positioned properly. So it is an exercise that's easy to cheat. But as far as dumbbell exercises go, it's one of the best to work the lats. Like just as far as straight dumbbell exercises go. Um, and then, you know, with the barbell, barbell exercises, like with if you do a barbell row, uh, it's a little bit like unwieldy and you put yourself in a tougher position. So you actually lift less weight doing a barbell row because the position you're like in you're more stabilizers. You're, you are. You're so, so, now, so now a barbell row will will. Um, activate other muscles it does work more stabilizers it involves the lower back again we get to the idea if you want to isolate the lats doing a dumbbell exercise not that it will completely isolate the muscle but one of but one of the more effective ones to maximize the use of that muscle would be the bent over dumbbell row so again it's similar to the bicep curl but not as extreme in that it's not quite as like a functional movement, but it's still pretty functional because you're using multiple muscles. Yeah, so you know, it's just I just never I never got no, results. I think it's I've effective. always I, I always gonna... like the cables for doing the last. Yeah, sure, there there are lots are... of different ways, there are a lot of options, but there's no point. real difference yeah. between the movements. If your if your form is proper, you know, yeah, using a cable, you're gonna get a little bit more core involvement if you're standing upright. Uh, but it's like, you know, it's, always, it's so easy no. to cheat, and it's hard. It's and easy to cheat, and but I think annoying, it's, and then bringing over the weight. It's a staple just, exercise for if you're weightlifting. I know, I, I think. know. So I, and I, I, think I just, it's pretty effective. I just never liked it all. Yeah, that much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say you're one, <laughs> you're one for one right now. So, <laughs> 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 all right, what's next? Um, cable shoulder extensions. So it's basically, uh, you can either hold just the ball, or especially the one with the handle, where you do this, and then you extend your shoulder all the way out. Now, I know there's a... Okay. Uh, Remember that listeners can't see what you're doing? So, yeah, I'm trying to explain. Maybe you have a better name to it. Okay. So it's like, you're here, and then you like... like, Okay, so it's a rear delt fly. So if you stand, imagine standing upright, your arm is uh, straightforward, kind of perpendicular to the body, and you're holding on to a cable, the resistance would be going from straight forward, extending the arm out to the side. Yes. So the arm stays kind of parallel to the floor the whole time. Uh, now, so, remember, okay. you could do it by just holding on to the ball yeah. of the cable or doing the handle. The handle, yeah. I think, is even worse because it's a lot of weird stuff on the wrist. Yeah. So, once again, I feel it's a little overrated. I, I, I much prefer the machine or do a dumbbell version of it. I just don't like I just never felt that it's all that oh, great. You, you're one for three now. I, I, you I like you, so I know you like. Okay, you again, love that again, exercise. we get go back to. It, it's an isolation exercise, so it's not as there. There are more effective exercises to do. I would say I like it as as an isolation exercise. If I'm going to do something to isolate the rear deltoids and the upper back and work the upper back muscles, I like that as opposed to other uh, some of the other exercises. It's a little. Right. 
you're, you're in a better position. Like if you're doing dumbbell flies, um, you're, it's a little bit harder of a position to be in. The setup is harder. You have to be bent over, which can be good in some ways. But again, yeah. you're it's not it's this is a little bit easier if you want to isolate the muscle. So I'm going to say it's it's effective if you're looking to isolate the rear delts. It's kind of hard to isolate that muscle. Okay. And even if you if you do it with the machine, let's say you use like the um, you know, like the pec deck machine, yeah, the yeah. reverse one. Uh, the problem is that you start engaging other upper back muscles, which mm. is probably more effective functionally. Yeah. So if you want to get the rhomboids and the mid traps and and some other you know other muscles uh, involved, you're it's effective to do the machine. But if you want to isolate the rear deltoids, back of the shoulder, then that's probably the most effective for that. So now, like I said, as a as a as an isolation exercise, I like it. As uh, just an exercise to do, there are probably more effective things you can do because it, it does isolate the muscle. So unless you have a specific weakness. Now, that that is a weakness for a lot of people. So there are people who, who are stronger in the front part of the shoulder and the side and the, the lateral part, but not as strong in the, in the rear part. So, you know, I'm going to say I don't think it's over. I don't, also don't see it overdone. So I'm going to say it's not, not I used quite to see a lot overrated. of people doing that one. Yeah. I mean, I can see where, I can see your point again. And, I, you know, I'm in the middle with it. But okay. Yeah, I don't think it's overrated because I just don't see it done enough to say, oh, it's too, you know, something that's right. done too much versus like a bicep curl, which I see people do all the time. So now this one I, I has to be tremendously overrated. Decline bench press, right? I think it's just one of the dumbest, weirdest exercises. Decline bench press. It's like, or decline dumbbells. It's why, why people talk about the lower pec. There's no such thing as a lower pec. I mean, the, right, uh, right. Is it really helping with another angle? You got your bench press. You got incline bench press. You got dumbbells. You got incline dumbbells. You have a bunch of machines, cable flies, dumbbell flies, decline bench press. Really, you're back there. You're sort of strapped in. I think it's just a dumb exercise. I would never do it. I don't it. know if it's a dumb exercise. So I'll say, people again, do. You see people do loading up tons of weight doing this decline. I think it's weird. So I don't know that it's as necessary as some other exercises. I think your the range is limited. Um, whatever benefits you get from it are minimal, you know, compared to you know there is a part of the the um, chest that does kind of attach near the abdominal region. So it's you know, not, I would be reluctant to say there's no lower pack, but yeah, yeah. but the the amount that that might activate it versus doing a cable fly or a regular bench press is minimal so i i don't so i could see i could see your point that i i don't think it's it puts you in a weird position um you can lift heavier weights in in some instances at the with the decline bench but it's more about the position that you're in and that you're not pressing as much or as far you know there's some benefits mechanically in a weird way even though you're at a weird angle to, to doing the decline bench press so you know i yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you that it's kind of overrated. I mean, I don't see, again, I don't see tons of people doing them anymore. Oh, we, remember, people used to do them all yeah. the time. I don't know. You go to big gyms, people still yeah, do you're them right. a lot. No, okay, so I, I would say. And they do them with dumbbells, too. It's just Whatever benefit weird. you gain from it, 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 it's not enough to make up for doing other other variations of, of uh, pressing exercises or or, or um, fly type exercises that that will affect the chest. So yeah, okay, I'll give you that one. I'll say okay. So you're two, you're what two for four? So you're, you're five hundred. I got right I now. got uh, I got two more. Okay, oh, two more. You said so I got you two have six. More. Yeah, I got six. Okay, I, and then I have one seriously underrated. I'll see what you think about that. All right, the next one is. Um, uh, calf raises. Okay, I just. It's I guess you could do maybe if you did a few of them here or there, but you know I see I would see trainers with people standing on these things doing like tons of calf raises, and we used to do tons of them. And I'm like, really? Is it really helping that much? It's like there's so many other cool leg exercises. Like maybe it's not a terrible exercise, but once one of those things for me, like biceps, use it sparingly a little bit, but yeah. focus your energy elsewhere. You don't want to spend tons of time doing calf raises. Yeah. Well, okay. So I'll say yeah, that's overdone sometimes. So, so remember what the what's the scenario that we when we were young. Young, why why were people doing tons of calf raises? Uh, people wanted to build up their wanted thought they wanted to build up their calf muscle to, either to look good or um, to jump higher for basketball. Oh so yeah, I guess so, that's right. They so thought that, it was a performance that's misleading. thing. So first thing is, I would say a lot yeah, of you, you, all the time. I, I mean, I, I wasn't very good at basketball, but all my friends played basketball growing up, so we we would play a lot. And it was like, oh, you got to build your calves, and that's kind of BS. Like you don't your calves aren't going to make you bigger calves won't make you jump higher because you know if you think you know any, to get better at anything as we've talked yeah, about yeah. 
you know, you, you have, have to, to do work that. within the range. So if you want to be a better jumper, like actually the things that are more effective for the jumping is uh, the actual movement. Even the lower back is more important yeah. because of the, back, sure. the extension up and that kind of hip hinge is more important than the quadricep strength. Like those are all or empower. Those are things that are going to help you jump higher than just being able to, you know, be having bigger calves. So that's just one thing that I would notice a lot with people. Uh, you see kids like they're trying to build their calves and they got to shrink again. They're all these weird devices that are supposed to help you jump. But it's like, it's not so much the calves as much as the, the muscles that work on the actual, in actual jumping. But yeah, I can say calf raises are overdone. You know, this is my own little theory is like, you know, there are certain, there are like certain muscles well, not in my theory, but just there are certain muscles that are kind of, um, they're important links in the chain, but they're links in the chain that will get work doing everything yes. else. Like your forearms, your calves, the traps to an extent. Like those are all areas that through most of your other exercises, they're going to be working. So as long as you're 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 not, there's no weakness there. Yeah. It, I don't think it's necessary to overdo it. And in some cases, you can, doing that can cause an injury. Like if you yeah, overdo like forearm tight. exercises, that could cause injury. Sure. If you overdo calf exercises, unless, you know, like, now let's say you're doing like your grappler or, you know, you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, especially with a gi, grip strength is important. So you're going to work the forearms because you need the grip strength. Or, but that's a total you know, function. If you do something. So, so there are times where you might need to work that muscle, but there, there should be a real reason. Like I, you need it for a sport. Um, or you need it because you have a weakness, like you have really weak calves or small, let's say you're a bodybuilder and you have tiny calves. Well, you're going to probably have to build your calves up. Like, but the calves are also a muscle that if you have, if you have tiny calves, it's going to be really hard to build them beyond like, you know, it, it's yeah. just a hard muscle to just get bigger. Yeah. So, and it's not meant for that, you know, it's yeah. made, f it, it's an endurance muscle. So, yeah. you know, they're, yeah, I would say doing a lot of calf raises is definitely overrated. And also it's not too functional you know yep. just when I know do, it helps a little when bit with in explosion life like if you're running and you need to make a quick tilt it helps not a really. little bit no not doing ca calf raises won't do it I mean yeah, and the, calf other, raises actually, and the other thing it. to consider is um, the real area that you need to be working on is the front part the uh, tibialis anterior because mm. the calves are generally tight we walk all like the cat like the muscle point like if you point your toe you're flexing your calves right and so every all the time all day and most people are not like most people can't flex their foot up. Like if you try to point your toe up towards your face, most people can't get past like, it, you know, 30 degrees. So like 90 degrees is like, let's say your foot's normal, like you're standing on the floor and your the foot, the knee, the leg is kind of perpendicular to the foot. Most people can't flex the foot up much. Um, and so we're, we're constantly in a position where we're pressing, pressing, pressing. We're walking upstairs. We're pushing off to walk. So the calves are generally pretty tight. So... The last thing you're going to want to do with a really tight muscle is then work it so that it's even tighter. So, so unless you have weak calves, it's more important to actually work work on the the strength in the anterior tibialis and the mm. flexibility in the calves. That's actually more important than doing calf raises. So, all right. So you're you're what you're three for five right now. I'll give you that one. So what else? All right. And the last one is anything with the Smith machine. <laughs> I just, I, it's one of those things. It's, someone's always using it. Bench press. I see people do using it for upright rows, all, upright rows all the time. It doesn't mm. make sense. Like, why? I see people doing it for military press, inclined press, just everything you could think of. I've seen people doing it with the Smith machine, and mm. I'm just like, Really? Why? Yeah, I mean, I, like, I think I've softened my stance slightly on this. I think I, squats I, with a Smith I think machine. It, I, okay, I, that I would, would be dangerous. Yeah, there, squats, deadlifts, I would definitely not do. Uh, bench presses yes. are not perfect, but if you if that's what you're gonna do, you're gonna do it. Uh, it's fine. Yes, so it's uh, you so know, I wouldn't rough. recommend it. So I wouldn't do it with things. a client. There are better things to do, but I don't think you'll injure yourself as much as you might with a deadlift or a squat. Uh, you know, same thing with shoulder presses. Like, yeah, you could do it. It's not the it, it, the better options, but you can do it. Uh, like upright rows again, same it. thing. You can do the upright row. It's not the most effective. You're better off doing it with dumbbells. But if if that's what it takes to get you to work out, then fine. Once if it again, gives always you, better than nothing. It's better than nothing. If it gives you the sense of security that you need to to lift, then fine. You know, I just I definitely would avoid like squats and deadlifts doing it. And the lo like if you look at I guess any exercise that you're gonna do, you're gonna switch from a dump of barbell exercise to the Smith machine, you want to look at the movement and say like, how linear is this movement? Do you yeah. like, if I go from point A to point B, is this a straight line? You know? And, and if it's not, if there's like an arc, the, the bigger the arc, the less, you know, the, the, or, or the, the, or the more kind of deviation from that, the line that you get with that exercise, the less, I, I inclined I would be to do that exercise. So, you know, you know, less inclined you are. Yeah. <laughs> so I would just stay away from, I would stay away from it, 
But if it's a difference between somebody who has who who's gonna lift and not gonna lift, and you know if they're doing the safer exercise, okay, I'll, I'll give you it. I'll say it's overused. Um. It's overused so yes. Yeah, so you're you're four for six. So, all right. All right. So four out of six ain't bad. What's that? It's two out of thirty three percent. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean sixty six percent. Okay. All right. Good. All right. All right. So well, um. Uh, now now for my most I almost. Oh, so you have a seven. I, no, no, I have an underrated one. Pro- okay. One of the most underrated underused and i think it's just such a great exercise uh for strength function it's just everything and it's the farmer's walk like if you carry a bunch of heavy weights in your hand walk around with them using proper form i think it's great for muscle endurance strength great function because you carry heavy things uh it you know it just works a lot of stuff i think it's just a great exercise and it's, i just never see it done yeah I see it done. I think it's a, it's a good exercise. It works to grip strength. Um, if you have good posture, strength, good posture. Yeah. it's a key. Yes. Posture is key, but it can be a good exercise. I just yeah. rarely see it. That yeah. was my idea. Something I think that's a really wonderful exercise that is very underdone because it's not comfortable. It's not a comfortable exercise. Sure. Okay, I'll give but. you that. <laughs> so. I'm not going to convince me to start doing it, but I'll, g- I'll, give, you <laughs> I'll give you that exercise. See what I'm saying? All uh-huh. right. Right. Um, all right. Well, that's so. I guess that's it for this part. Now we actually do have, um, as Justin um, mentioned, we do have a call in. Ask the trainer. So this one is uh, from a friend of Justin's. So uh, it's the first time we're doing a kind of call in. Uh, if this is something that you are interested in, right now we're we're not gonna, you know, we're, we're this is kind of a test to see if this would work. But if it's something you're interested in, you want to give us a call, um, shoot us an email at the at gmail dot com. We'll try to arrange a time to do a call in, kind of ask the trainer. If this is something that works, we'll then try to find a system that works. Whether it's doing some kind of like a voicemail type of system where you call, answer, or we'll just do like live, like live gym Wits podcast. But this is one of these. This is kind of like we're just testing it out and seeing how this works. So <laughs> I guess without further ado, this we're gonna we're gonna punch into our our. Uh, Q and A with uh, Dave, right? Yes. All right. All right. So we're here with my good friend David Gillen, and he has a few questions for us. Hey, hey how Dave, are you guys doing? On, man. Very well, thanks, Dave. N- not much, I guess. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Uh yeah, so Justin uh, helped me in the past with the the first gut off championship. Yeah, I remember uh, that. gave me a yeah, you gave me a lot of useful tips, and I have since kind of let myself go in a certain aspects. So, my girlfriend started doing CrossFit recently, so mm-hmm. she has me on a paleo diet, which I offered to do for support. Okay, and I figured now's the time to start getting into shape. So. Uh, I found a small fitness thing for a, a kettlebell because I don't have much stuff. So I have a I have a 15 pound kettlebell. So I found this workout with a kettlebell squats, and there's a part of the workout that I have trouble with, which is pull ups. Okay. And I cannot do pull ups. I can hang down, and I've been trying to do that and getting stronger. But I want to know if there's something I can do around the house with a kettlebell. I have a couple of eight pound dumbbells, a couple of five pound dumbbells. But something I can do in the meantime to build up strength, so I'd be able to to add that exercise into my routine. You mean add the pull up eventually into your routine? Yeah, yeah, something to strengthen myself so I can get the pull up into my routine. Because in the routine it says to have you know, weighted pull ups, which I can't even do. You know, a set of five regular pull ups. Chin ups I can do like thirty, but pull ups I just for me I'm I've never really done them. So do you have a pull up bar at at home? I do not, okay. and that's the unfortunate part. And that's why I wanted to see if I could get something where, because if I have to go to the, I know they have one in Astoria Park. Yeah. Uh, but but to go all the way over there to not be able to do pull-ups, it seems like a, a lot of effort for little reward. So I want to know if there's something I can do in the meantime where it would at least make get me to a point where I could go to the park and be able to do the exercises or something like that. You know, you could do what uh, a lot of people do is they just do pull-ups on the construction bars on the street <laughs> so you don't have to yeah, go I all actually, the way to uh, I, Astoria Park. <laughs> funny enough, I walked around my neighborhood looking for scaffolding, and I didn't see anything. Yeah, of course. When, always when you're looking for it, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, okay, so first part to answer the question. So un- for any exercise, unfortunately or fortunately, in order to get better at it, you kind of have to work as close to the range 
and movement and speed of, of the exercise that's your goal. So if you want to be better at pull-ups, nothing will will match actually doing pull-ups or some close variation of it, or you know, so or some kind of a modification. So so while like there are tons of great kettlebell exercises and, and a lot of great things you can do even with just kettlebells and some dumbbells, nothing that you do with that will really translate to the pull-ups as much as doing something that's close to pull-ups. So that would either mean, you know, just getting to the park and, uh, you know, there are a few, there are a few options. So now I'm going to actually plug a book that I, I wrote a book um, that's called door frame pull-up bar workouts, which is based around using one of those like door frame pull-up bars, you know, the ones that you can, you can get them like in models or online that you hook up into like yeah, the, yeah. the frame. So there, there's a lot of stuff there because, because pull-ups are great and they're, but it's tough to build up to that. So I have a lot of good exercises in there and, and good tips to like build up to doing pull-ups that you can do but you need some kind of a bar so it might mean getting like a pull-up bar like that or just you're gonna have to go to the park at least a couple times a week to work on it um now as far as like some ideas there's some things you can do to get better at it so one idea one thing you can do is uh like get like a really heavy exercise band you know like there was the the resistance bands the elastic bands that they have like in physical therapy practices or at, at gyms you can probably get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I think I know. Yeah, I know what so you're talking about. If you take that and you kind of hook it up to a bar and then you put your your foot in it to kind of weigh down the band, the the weight of the resistance that the band has kind of pulling back up will make the pull-ups easier. You know, like if you hook the handles to the bar and then you step into it and let yourself hang, the the band is going to want to pull you back up. So that will add a little bit of um resistance going upwards which will will help you do the pull-ups so that's one way oh, so you're literally yeah you're literally putting the bar like the the band around the pull-up bar yeah and then putting your foot in it so yeah. that it, it's taking some of your weight off exactly yeah it's just like the, the pull-up okay. machines at the gym so that's one way to do it like let's say you, you're you're at the point where you can do a couple of one or two pull-ups or or you can do like half of a pull-up like that's one way that it adds that little bit of assistance that will help you do some pull-ups you know before w without you know without having to manage like the entire weight. Um, the other option is, one other way to get stronger is you'd find a way to start at the top of the pull-up. So let's say you'd grab a step or a bench or a chair and you'd, you'd physically get yourself to the point where you're at the top of a pull-up and then you really slowly control yourself down. So that kind of trains the body in the negative direction, but also it, it's a good way to add strength. Um, it won't make things perfect. It's not going to, you know get you to do the pull-ups you know perfectly but it'll at least add some control and help you add strength to the actual muscles that are working when you're doing pull-ups so you might do it like depending on your strength you may do it at like a three count down or you may do it at like a five count down or if you can control it like a 10 count going down but that's a great way to do it is to actually just control yourself down slowly it'll help you build the strength um and then some other ideas like you could do like a jump pull up like you jump grab the bar and use the momentum the momentum going up to pull yourself up the rest of the way uh, so that's a little trick. So there are a lot of little tricks that you can kind of do to do to be better at doing pull-ups, but nothing beats actually doing pull-ups. So even just doing in the halfway, like kind of you just jump up and then try to hang yourself down very slowly would yes. be the best probably. Yeah. yeah, anything like that. Anything where you're at, you're getting yourself up on the bar, and then you just start working with that. So let's say let's say you can do a half of a pull-up, then you work with that, and then you start doing like three quarters of a pull up, or you know, and then you work, you you build on that. So you kind of take whatever you can do when it comes to pull ups, and just build on it. But then there are a lot of other strategies while you're while you're working that to to help with it. So whether it's doing the negatives like we talked about, or doing adding resistance, or having a partner, you know, just hold your legs and help you do it. Like whatever you can do, um, nothing beats just getting on the bar and doing the pull ups. So if they like in this route in this workout i yeah. guess it says you know you have sets so like you do like five and then four and then three two one yeah and they'll usually have like three sets of those yeah so say i take that maybe just translate that to just like three hanging down sure. like five hanging down four try to do something like that exactly yeah you can totally until it goes do that. yeah and like with any exercise so the, the problem with any kind of online thing or even me like i so i've done two kind of fitness books and in each book i have to design like workout routines and when you do like a one size fits all type of routine, it, it's never going to meet everybody's needs. So rather than just kind of high, not do the exercise, you just find an alternative. So like what's the closest thing you can do to a pull up 
without actually doing the pull-up and then you just find you, you just work that in so that's the way to do it is just kind of find the closest thing you can do and that's how you modify it until you can get to the point where you're actually doing that exercise you know that works for anything anything that's or, or on the flip side let's say there's an exercise that's just become really easy you may need to find a way to modify that or progress that exercise in order to make it more challenging so that it works both ways so as you get better and more fit and stronger um better conditioning y- you can't stick with the same variables. Otherwise, your body just adapts to it and you're not going to make progress. You have to then modify in the other direction as well. Would that be like something like where they're talking about with like weighted pull-ups or something like that? Yeah, you sure. Know, that, you, or really anything. Let, let's say it says do, do a kettlebell swing, do three sets of 12 reps with 20 pounds of a kettlebell swing. And you've been doing that for, for eight weeks and it feels like you know, it's pretty easy. It's not challenging anymore. Then something's got to change. So maybe you add five pounds or you add a couple of extra reps. Like you got to do something to make that more challenging. Like you shouldn't ever do like, you know, an exercise and feel like, oh, that was easy. Unless it's, unless that's a purpose. Like if it's a warm up or a stretch or you're doing something that's focused more on balance or control. But if you're doing an exercise, you know, to, for strength or for conditioning, it should be challenging. And if it's not, then you have to do something to make it better, make it harder. Yeah, I think that's one thing that Justin knows because when I was doing, when he was helping me out with working out, the the goal of that, the gut off was not really strength. It was to lose weight rapidly. So we had a lot of cardio calisthenics on top of a little bit of weight training. But I'm really looking for strength now. Yeah. And I guess with the kettlebell, I mean, there's only a few exercises that I'm doing right now with this routine that I found, uh, which is. You have kettlebell swings, kettlebell presses, and weighted squats, I guess chalice squats or goblet squats, yeah. something, whatever they're called. But, I mean, are there any other things that would be good to throw in there? I think that some basic body weight exercises would, would be crucial. So push, push-ups, push got to do push-ups. I think that that's – everyone at every level does push-ups. So um, – if you can do them, I think I think you could do a few push-ups. If you can do, try to do a, a few full push-ups, and then maybe uh, after that, maybe do some from your knees until you build up. You'll build those up quickly, and I think that just even doing some push-ups and some dips as well. Uh, with the push-ups, you can do different grips. You could do wide push-ups, diamond push-ups, regular like that. I think that will actually help a, a smidge with doing a pull-up too. Just getting overall stronger, and as well maybe some core. Maybe doing uh, some crunches. Is there a way to do like the the uh, the reverse crunch? Do you recommend that, Ryan? Like when you're doing like that, is that not a good exercise to do? Is it depends dangerous? On how you're, depends on how you're doing it, but. Yeah, to add on to what Justin said, I think if, if body weight exercises are challenging, then keep doing it. Like anything that's going to be a challenge is going to make you stronger. So you can work on, you know, you can work on doing push-ups, as Justin said, dips. Um, there's also press-ups, which are like if you start in a plank and then you, you press both arms up at the same time. That's a really good strength exercise. Uh, you know, the challenge will be as you get better at the body weight exercises, you may need more, you know, to, to work your strength. So you know, as uh, you know, it's great. Again, doing kettlebell is great, and there are a lot of conditioning things you can do. But if you really want the strength, like nothing beats really being in a gym where you have access to the the a wider selection of free weights and machines. Yeah, as I was yeah and that's where that yep. yeah, that's the point where I'm trying to get started. Cut you off, Justin. I'm trying to get to the point where it it's kind of worth it to go. Yeah, you know, because right now I just you know I just don't have the the funds to go. But I you know I have the little bit of weights and stuff like that. I'm just trying to get to a point where you know you where you know if i did want to go to a gym i'd be able to make the most of it yeah you know because that's a you know a sizable commitment with you know money these days of course tremendous and that's one that the one i used to have the gym in my building and we moved two years ago and i think that's what really happened with me is i don't have it anymore so that was the the tough part is fine of finding substitutions well, I always thought that the, the two adjustable dumbbells that go up to 50 pounds, you might even be able to find a few for very cheap, even someone giving them away on Craigslist. You never know. Those adjustable dumbbells, you, there's just so many exercises. You almost don't even need a gym. If you, have the, if you have two adjustable dumbbells, you can do so many exercises and get stronger. So I always recommend having that. If you can get the physio ball as well, really helps. So obviously the more equipment is always better, but yeah, two adjustable dumbbells that go up to around 50 pounds, I think that would be a very good um, thing for you to get your hands on if you can. 
Yeah, it's something I like to do. The physio ball, I don't really, I don't think I've ever used anything like that. That sounds like it'd be challenging if you yeah. haven't used one before to, to, to do that on your own yeah. without some guidance. Yeah, it might be challenging. I mean, there, there are some simple enough exercises, but... You know, one thing, there are lots of tutorial, easy, you know, guides on YouTube. And it's, it's the easier exercises are pretty straightforward to do. It's just that, that it's one of those things that it can get very complicated and very challenging very quickly. But, uh, you know, it, but the physical is a great tool. And I think anything, so especially if you're working out at home, it's kind of anything that will add a challenge will help you with your strength. Or, you know, will help you with making progress, especially with, you know, be, without having access to to uh, a regular gym, so that's where physical can definitely be beneficial. But even so, like if you can combine body weight with the kettlebell work and dumbbells, you should be able to get a lot in. It's just that you have to be mindful of progression, and if you feel like something is getting too easy, you have to find a way to make it harder, and either you know again make the exercise harder or change the variables because it's easy to when you when you're limited with equipment, it's really easy to kind of fall into just a, a routine that's the same thing over and over, and that's that's the biggest challenge to any exercise program where your your goal is to make progress or get stronger is if you fall into a routine and, and do the same thing over and over, you, you stop making the kind of progress that you're going to want to make. So what do you think like if an investment in a dumbbell set would be good or what other things would be, you know, investments that maybe I could look on so, like a Craigslist or something like yeah. that, that would be like the, the best bang for your buck. Yeah, best kind of in terms of like home gym stuff. Yeah, best bang for your buck, I would definitely say some adjustable dumbbells would be great, as Justin mentioned. Uh, and a, so a physio ball and or a bench. So, you know, I would almost say if you're if you can get if you yeah, if, if you can get a cheap like but adjustable bench that goes flat or inclines that can help a little bit with some strength exercises. Uh, the adjustable dumbbells would be good, and then the pull up. If you can, if you're well, a also it's like if your door frame can allow for that type of a pull up bar, I would definitely recommend it because it gives you a chance to do pull ups. It's just that every apartment's different. Like I live in a really old like old house, so like it yeah. doesn't accommodate that for me. But so and then and then like I have a friend who he lives in a new house, but the the frames are so flimsy that it won't accommodate it. So some of that specific to like where you are. But like yeah, a, my frames are fine, but okay. um, yeah, it's a really old building, yeah, so, so the, the the doors are really big. Yeah, so I would I just check the sizes compared to like like each the um if you look it up online, like it'll give you guidelines for like what you would need for your door frame. So I would just check that against what you have, but that would be a great investment. And then like a pair of adjustable dumbbells will be fine, and that's more than enough for you to get like a good strength workout for now, and you know get yourself into shape while you're, you know, getting ready for for to go to the gym. That sounds good. And yeah, the yeah, Justin had something to say. I was just it's it's funny. I was just looking on uh, on uh, online on eBay for uh, adjustable dumbbells. It's like I found I I found uh, one for uh, the Bowflex something for three hundred dollars, and then right below it, when you go down, I found something uh, a set for up to forty pounds for fifteen dollars. So it's like they really, uh, yeah, this gets expensive. So yeah, send, send, send me that link. Yeah, just, that go to sounds e like... just, just go to eBay. Just go to eBay and look at it. Like you'll see. They have so much good stuff. You could probably look on Craigslist. You know, there's so much of this stuff. I well, wondered, I wouldn't want to do this. Like you never even know if you could go to, go to a gym and ask if they have ex surplus, uh, they have extra stuff lying around they're looking to get rid of or looking to sell. You never, you never know. There's so much of this I've equipment. Seen, yeah. I've seen it before in the around. past, yeah, on Craigslist for free. Sure, people look stuff like that. Sometimes it. you see it, yeah, because it's just heavy and they don't want it. Yep, exactly. So, well, I hope this. Uh, I hope this helps, Dave. I hope that you're able to oh, get definitely. into it. Please keep us, uh, you know, keep us informed. Any other questions? Always feel free to uh, to give us a shout. Yeah, I'll keep you posted on my progress because um, I mean, just within the, like with the diet and just like the starting working out, I think I'm down like ten pounds already right. in just like about three weeks. So I'm feeling better and everything's working, but uh, trying to add stuff at home is the uh, is the difficult stuff because I've never really never really done that before. So I really appreciate the help, guys. Of course. So yeah, I would say first start with some of those body weight exercises, then maybe look for a set of adjustable dumbbells and, and see what you can come up with. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I appreciate it. I'll keep you guys uh, you know informed on my progress. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Dave. Hey, right, thanks, guys. Pretty. 
important standard information. I think yeah. Dave is in a boat with a lot of yeah. people looking to get back into working out or building on something he'd never really done before. Not a tremendously high budget to go join the gym and looking for you know ways to get started. Yeah, yeah, and, th- and that's the, the the as we mentioned. I think to get back to the pull up question with anything you want to do, and we talked about this with the jumping too. Anything you want to do, you uh, have to do that. If you have a goal, a physical goal, then the closer you can mimic that actual movement and speed, and uh, the closer you can get to that, the better the exercise will translate. So just keep that in mind. With any any time you have a goal, uh, you gotta you gotta be as close as you can to that to translate. And then as far as just the workouts are concerned, you, you can get a lot with a little. So um, hopefully, we'll, we'll try to put something together for for Dave that can. Uh, help him get his results and then uh we'll we'll, la- we'll put it onto the uh, app you know again if you don't have the gym WhatsApp, app you have ios uh definitely download it because with the app what it gives us the opportunity to do uh is add bonus content so we can add cool pdfs stuff. with workouts mm-hmm. as we've done in the past uh so it definitely gives us a and you know there's some cool functions now like if you have the app on ios it'll show you a little red thing you know when you if you've missed an episode oh, or cool. new episodes out so uh-huh. then if you've missed like six or seven episodes then you ha- you can uh like i will get a little anxious and start obsessing about that you got to finish you got you got to catch up because i don't want to see the little the little red dot with the six or whatever <laughs> is there so uh yeah download the app uh, you get the bonus content um and that is it, I think, yep. right? Anything else? Yep. I think that's it. All our so stuff is at thegymwits.com. Uh, uh, shoot us emails again. Always at right in. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we want to get as many ask trainer stuff out, uh, questions out there. Uh, and uh, that's it. I'm Ryan George. I'm Justin Guild, a.k.a. Chef Sonic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and we are the Gym Bits. <laughs> <laughs>